All right, YouTube, it's Spectacular Rogan. I'm gonna do a little little fighting today. It's gonna be some uh, some battle in the uh, in the cage here. Uh, I'm gonna put some stuff up against uh, each other. Some some junk silver. I want to talk about some maybe some misconceptions about uh, junk silver. Maybe some myths. Maybe some facts that are out there that it's just you know it's time consuming or it's hard to figure out some of this stuff. Um, hopefully I can take, uh, my own time and help you save your time by doing what I'm going to do today. So I got some, uh, some junk silver here. You can see that I've got some, uh, I got the barbers right here. Barber half dollars. Got the walking Liberty half dollars. I got the uh, Benjamin Franklin half dollars and the JFK half dollars, all silver. Um, well, 90% silver, all of them, right? There's nothing different. In any of these, it's 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 literally, um, I got ten half dollars in each one of these stacks, and they're all the same. So they're not not all the same, but you know, it's all Walking Liberties, it's all Barbers, you know. They're it's what I would call when you buy these um, from a junk pile. These are not the uh, you know the uncirculated beautiful ones. These are just probably typically what you're going to find in a junk pile at junk prices. Um, generally, when I buy these, I get them for about $11 to $12 um, per $1 face. So what I want to do today, though, is I want to like go over the different kinds and weigh them and see if you're getting um, more bang for your buck. If you go for the, let's just say, you know, the 1964 stuff, or a little bit earlier than that, you know, in compared in comparison to, you know, the older stuff like the barbers. Are you getting more bang for your buck if you go for, you know, what what is probably going to have more silver in the in these ones? Because they're less worn, they didn't have enough years, you know, to to get into people's pockets and to get jumbled around and and get worn down. So what I'm going to do is I got my my handy little scale right here. What we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to try to push these out of the way. And we're going to weigh each stack and kind of figure out, is it worth it? Is it worth it? So we're going to turn this bad boy on. That's it powering up. It's powered up. It's got grams on it. What I'm expecting to find here is each half dollar, so each one of these, is supposed to be two and a half grams at its finest, right? So at its peak, when it just came off the hot off the press, you want to have two and a half grams. So 90% of that two and a half grams is going to be made out of silver. The other half or the other 10% is going to be copper. So ideally what we want to see with 10 of these coins being two and a half grams, we're going to do some quick math. Boom, 12, 125 um, grams, right? 12.5 times 10 is 125. So we want to see 125 grams here to be like what they're supposed to be, you know? And that's $5 worth of halves now, just FYI. It's 10, 10 half dollars. So here we go. Let's see what we end up with, with the big boys. So that's pretty good. You know, 124.6. Not bad, right? That's, uh, you know, 0.4 away from being exactly what it's supposed to be. I'm going to write that down. I got a little piece of paper here. I'm going to write that down for reference. So JFK made it in at 124.6. I got to, I got to be honest. I'm doing this for myself as much as everybody else, realistically, because I had some time on my hands. I was curious about how different the weights would be. So I got everything out. I decided let's do it and let's have fun doing it together. You know, you watch me, I'll watch you. That's creepy. So again, we're at, where are we supposed to be at? 125. So we're starting to starting to lose some weight here a little bit. Not much, not much. So it's about 0.9 grams uh, short. Let me write that down on my little paper there. And that again is the uh, Franklin, Franklin halves. So 124.1. This may be fascinating. 
We're going to do half dollars, um, quarters, and dimes on this. So stick around. Like I said, it might be a long one. Oops. It's going to be as long as it takes. That's how long it's going to be. In case anybody's curious, it's going to be as long as it takes. And I'm getting hungry, so I hope it doesn't take too long. All right, so now we're at the Walking Liberties. Now we're at lost, lost some uh, significant weight here. Significant weight. These are um, slightly older Walking Liberties. So like, like you can see right there, 1918. Um, but this is the average condition you're going to find, you know, the 1918 Walking Liberties and, and around that date. Average. You know, can you find, you know, brilliant uncirculated ones? Can you find, you know, superb condition ones? Absolutely. Oh, wait, what happened? 19.5. There we go. All right, 19.5. I made a little mess up on my thing, and you can't erase permanent marker. I don't know why. I guess it's permanent marker for a reason. All right, let's take this out. Boom. Now we're on to the big boys, the barber half dollars. These are hard to find in junk piles, i tell you what. But I did find um, several of them back in the day. I'm bringing them back out in the, into the light. You know, they cost me at the time. I can't remember, but it was around the $11 mark. I got them all, everything for about the same price at the time. Hard to find these now. It's probably going to cost you more money. So, surprising, right? So, 115.2 grams. Let me write that down on my little paper here. I don't know where the accent comes from. It just comes out. All right, point two. So, let me get rid of those. Do, do, do. Say goodbye. Say la vie. I don't know how this is going to work. Let's try this out. Let's see if how, how well I can show this off. So, this is where we are, we're at so far here. So, is that shocking? Do you think that's what you kind of expected? Those kind of numbers? Again, we're supposed to be at 125 for like a perfect, you know, perfect weight. We've lost we've lost a decent amount of weight here, which means that 90% of this number right here is, you know, the silver. Punch that into your calculators. I don't have a calculator handy and I'm not a mathematician. But that's, you know, 90% of that is the actual silver. So you've lost some silver by buying the older dates. We're going to go over that a little bit later though. So, stay tuned. Hold on. What do you want to do next? You want to do dimes or you want to do quarters? Up to you guys. Up to you all. What do you think? Quarters? Fine. That's okay. That's what you want. You want to start with the older days or the older coins or the earlier coins? Okay, we'll start with the earlier coins. That's fine. Earlier meaning Washington. <laughs> hey. Anyways, so again, average, average coins. You know what I mean? Average condition for these. Let's see where we're at. Um, should say that these are supposed to be 6.25 grams each quarter, right? 6.25 grams on each quarter. 10 quarters are in my stack. So $2.50 worth total. So we should see a number like, let me do the math in my head, 62 and a half grams. 62.5 grams is what we should be at if it was a, like I said, straight out of the mint, never touched quarter. So, this is where we're at, 61.4. So, you know, actually kind of surprising. That's kind of, um, that's kind of a dip in what seems like a, a deeper dip in comparison to, like, the JFKs or something. So, where am I at here? Uh, 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 quarters. Let's see. Uh, ba -ba. 60, 61. Point four. Just put wash. Okay. All right. Let's get rid of those. Let's get on to the next. We'll do the standing liberty. So now uh, I want to say that these standing liberties are all uh, 1925 or later. So they'll all at least have the dates, which could help. Could help their. Uh, oops, my, my calculator turned. Or my calculator. My 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 scale turned off. What happened? Please don't tell me it's running out of batteries. That would be a bad day. Because I am not going out in the middle of the night to get batteries. No way. 
I'm just kidding. I'd go for you all. I would do it. Hopefully the Walgreens are just 24-7. All right, standing, standing Liberty quarters. I just got marker all over my finger. No big deal. It washes off. Never permanent. It's going to be there forever. I'm going to put quart. It's going to be 59.7. So, again, those are all with dates. So there might be a little bit more weight because it has, you know, the date's not rubbed off. I don't know how that works uh, compared to the dateless. I did have dateless. I could have did, did too, but uh, I wanted to do the ones with dates. Because, I mean, that's typically what you want to go for anyways. If you're buying... Um, you know, stand, standing liberties in a junk pile. Don't get the ones without dates. Get the ones with dates. It'll just, it it covers more, let's just say it covers more ground. You know, you could sell it to a coin collector. You could sell it for silver. You, can, you know, there's more avenues to make money with those if it has the date. So now we're going to go to the old barber quarters. <clears throat> Whoa. All right, barber. Let me write that down. Barber. Huh? And then we're going to go 57.1. And again, this is supposed to be 62.5. 62.5, ideal weight. So let me show you all the numbers. What, what we added up to here. Uh -huh. That's where we're at. 62.5 is what is ideal. And that's what we got. So we've we've lost quite a bit of weight again. Older coin. Is that what you expected? Well, if you watch the earlier part of the video with the half dollars, you would see there's a, some kind of a pattern right now. You know. So is it worth it to buy uh, the Barbers if you have a chance to buy the Washingtons? Stand by, we'll talk about it. Or is it even worth it to buy junk silver at all? Maybe you should only buy, um, you know, bullion. Because you're definitely getting, you know, your one ounce if you get a bullion, a bullion ounce uh, bar or, or round. All right, here we go. We're doing, well, let me, let me tell you about this first. So we're going to do the dimes now. It's going to be Roosevelt dimes first. Uh, these should be two and a half grams each. I have 10 of them, so a dollar's worth right here. So quick math, that's going to be 25 grams. This is what this should be right here, 25 grams. These are probably a little bit more worn than you could usually get Roosevelt's because they're Generally, they can come in some decent conditions. But, I just went for the average. I didn't pick out any certain coins. I literally just picked out from the average of, uh, of the pile. So we're at... Where are we at here? I'm running out of paper space. Okay, let's do uh, rose. Let's type rose. Because that sounds beautiful. Rose is 24.7. What did I say it was again? It's supposed to be 25 grams total. So 25 is the ideal weight. Dokely dokely, dankly dankly. Let me take these off. What are we on now? We're on, uh, what do you think? You want to do Barbers or Mercury's? All right, you guys wanted it. You can have You can have your Mercs. That's fine. I'll listen to you all. You know what I mean? Listen to the peoples. 24.2 for Mercs. And mark 24.2. So not that bad. Not that significant. I don't think. All right, what do you think? But now, let me show you the barbers. Boom. Whoa, right? Barber. B A R B E R. 22.5. Two all right, so I'll try to show you this. So that's what we should be, 25. That's what we ended up with. Take a second to let that thing sink in. So is it worth it to buy the Barbers if you can get a Roosevelt? Is it worth it to get a Roosevelt if you, you know, a Merc rather, if you can get a Roosevelt? You know, if you're only going for silver, only going for silver, you know the answer. If you're only going for the silver content, the answer is to go for um, the JFK's half dollars, to go for the Roosevelt dimes, to go for the Washington quarters. That's the answer. You know what, for fun, um, I'll show you some differences between uh, dollar coins that are worn and not worn. So here you go with a 
pretty pretty good um, one dollar coin and that should be I mean I think it's I think it's supposed to be like 27 27 grams I think or something like that 20 uh, pretty close to that approximately I have my little book right here you want to look at it hold on let me, let me give you the accurate info I don't want to give you approximately you know that's that's not who I am that's that's terrible I shouldn't have did that my bad I have access to information right here let's just use it because why not right let's not give you the the maybes let's give you the is so it should be 26.73 grams that's how much that should weigh okay 26.73 so that is ideal weight that's perfect so now I'm going to get one that's a little bit more worn. And you can see it's dropped now. Remember, the ideal was 26.73, so we're down from that a little bit. Look at the look at the mark right there where I got myself with the with the permanent marker. That's going to be there forever until I die. I'm going to go uh, I'm going to be in the grave and uh, you know my great great grandkids or whatever I got are going to be like, "Yep. Look at his finger. Marked himself." So now this is a Morgan. She's really worn out, right? Let's see what she's going to weigh. 20, what I say? 27, 26.73. 26.73 is the ideal. 26.73. So we've lost some weight, right? Not too bad, but not too good either. So is it beneficial to buy the Morgan over the piece? Or should you always get piece dollars? You know, if they're in better condition. Well, again... If you're going only for silver, you know the answer to that. You absolutely know the answer. You can do that in your own mind, with your own, you know what I mean? Like, you know the right from wrong. So now, just for fun, I want to show you some of the differences visually. I'll stack them together. we we'll stack the quarters together. Okay, let's show you how these look this way. So let's try to take this off the, uh, the old $3 Walmart tripod. It's going to be shaky now. You're in my hands. Don't worry. But I'm not all state though. All right, so, so here goes the half dollars. You can see the visual difference. I mean... What do we? I'll, I'll show you, so you don't forget which ones they were. Look at that difference. It's like a, it's like a ladder. It's like, did I count them wrong or what? That's why there's less weight. Here's the, here's the dimes. It's a dollar's worth of each one. <laughs> Excuse me. Got the hip hops. The hip hop anonymous. See the little, little steps it's doing there? Bump, bump, bump. Here's my quartus. Oh, wait, let's arrange these better so we can see some steppage. Let's put those there. Okay, so Washington to the right, Standing Liberty in the middle, Barber on the left. You see the difference? It ain't pretty, right? So, there goes the question. Is it worth it to get you know, the older coins. Well, if you're only going for silver, like I said, you know the answer. Go for the, go for this stuff. Go for the newer, newer years. If you're going for, you know, a little bit of everything, if you're trying to hedge your bets, if you want to appeal to more uh, buyers, start getting to the older coins. Or maybe go for the middle, you know? If you want to go for kind of like a little bit of everything, then go for the middle ones. Now, you know, is it worth it? Is it worth it to buy the old ones because maybe you can save more money if you um, if you if you buy the like the the newer stuff? You know, you just save some money, and you know, do you do you worry about maybe not being able to uh, sell it for you know the same money or whatnot? Well, I'll tell you that if you go to buy older coins, like let's, let's talk about online. If you go to buy these older coins online, like the Barbers, there's going to be a heavy premium. 
I'm just telling you right now, heavy premium compared to these. You know, it's an older coin, harder to get. People do have a desire to get those more. Um, so you will pay more. You can also sell them for more. I've been looking at eBay. I, I did a little research before I made this video so that I wouldn't just come on here with a, without a clue. But I saw the, like the, you know, the sold prices for, you know, $10 worth of Barbers versus $10 worth of Walkings versus $10 worth of Benjamins versus $10 worth of JFKs. And it's a stepping stone backwards. The higher price ones are these. You know, even though there's there's less silver in here technically because they're worn down more, you know, for average average circulated uh, coins. Whoops, I'm dropping them. The stepping stone turns backwards when it comes to selling them. People are going to argue with me on that. That's fine. I looked myself. You can go to eBay and see what things are actually selling for. Just because something is listed for sale, right, doesn't mean that it's selling for that. You got to look at the sold listings and see what people actually paid and bought things for. So as with all these different coins, it goes backwards. The older coins sell for a little bit more. Standing Liberty quarters do really well as far as selling them. So if you can find those with the dates, it has a huge collector's base. Walking Liberty is the same way. But typically, so, you know, higher to lower as far as silver content, it goes higher to lower versus, you know, for the actual how much they sell for. So that's, to me, that's interesting. Uh, hopefully that helped you all out a little bit. I want to throw some other stuff at you, right? So people go, um, should I just maybe only buy bullion, right? Because junk silver, why would you buy that? Well, if you can get it for the right price, I'll tell you what, and I'm going by online prices. If you can get it for the right price, and I get my junk silver for around $11 um, for each $1 face. <clears throat> Am I special? No. I see several places, even online. It may not be the big places, but several places you can buy this stuff right here um, online for that price. And you don't have to bet, you don't have to have like, you know, $70,000 face value, you know, coins worth to, to get that price. It's just a decent amount, you know, just like $10 worth or something. Maybe even a little bit less sometimes to get that price. So, right now when I'm doing this video, Silver Spot is $14.36, you know, for one troy ounce. So, if you were to pay like $11 like I am for $1 face of coin, so for, let's use these quarters over here that I'm going to grab and show you. So, if you were to pay $11 for what you see right here on the table, right? Um, that's, believe it or not, you can actually get a better price, um, than buying bullion online, at least. So I went to like, uh, jmbullion.com, All right, That's just my go-to. It's actually got some cheap stuff on there. I'm not like, you know, an advocate for them or anything like that. I'm not like a salesperson, a sales rep for them. They don't give me anything for free. It's just what I see. I'm trying to help other people out. It's a little cheaper than other places, you know, typically. doesn't have as big of a selection as like Appmex does, for sure. But it's got some nice prices, so that's why I'm going with them. So end of that rant. Let's keep going. So I looked at the cheapest um, round and bar that I could find, which both were about the same price. So, but <clears throat> the cheapest uh, bar, we'll just use bar, was... Um, if you bought, you know, like one of them, right? You're paying between $16 and six cents to $16 and 73 cents, depending on whether you're going to use your credit card or uh, bank wire or whatnot. So, um, that seems okay, right? For one ounce, right? Well, there's a big markup, of course. Sometimes you get specials, whatever. I'm not going by the special. I'm just going by the regular what's on there, one ounce. So now if you were to take your dimes, right, and you were to make it into one ounce of silver, so you're going to end up needing $10, I'm sorry, not $10, what am I saying, $1.40, right, 
you need those right there to make up close, close to an ounce of silver. Now, granted, I know we just went over this and we talked about like, you know, the weight loss and whatever. Let's imagine they were in flawless condition and they were the one ounce of silver now because I've made, you know, a dollar and 40 cents out of them. So now that right there at the $11 that I, you know, I pay for, um, for junk silver is going to cost you $15 and 40 cents. Okay versus that between between sixteen dollars and six cents to sixteen dollars and seventy three cents for the jm bullion one if you want to start meeting this price in bullion from jm bullion at the cheapest you know one ounce round they sell you have to buy at least 100 of them to get that deal and you're still going to have to pay with the bank wire you can't be doing like credit card or paypal so Maybe, maybe it's cheaper. Now, granted, we'll go back to talking now about the, the weight loss that we had in the coins, you know, from the silver, you know, silver reduction. So there is some weight loss there. That's got to be factored in. You're still probably not going to get as much silver if you just bought the one ounce, you know what I mean? It's, it's technically probably going to be a little bit cheaper um, to go the one ounce route to actually get your full, you know, ounce. Because... You got. You probably have to put in a few more coins, you know, here. Maybe, maybe two more of these, in order to get your one full ounce because of the the weight loss, you know, from the from the silver, from the worn down coins. So then you start worrying about money. I mean, this this is all going to get real mathematical, and I'm not doing it in this video because I'm not a mathematician. If you if you all want to do that video, please do it. But. You can use your head and see what I'm talking about that you're not going to quite get, you know, as much silver for the price if you buy the junk silver versus the bullion. But, you know, saying it like I said and I showed you before, technically um, you're getting more bang for your buck, potentially if you can get it for the right price, the junk silver. But then again, like I was saying, there's different avenues to sell these things. You sell them to a coin shop. You know, coin shops will take these. Coin shops might not take your bullion, you know, depending on the coin shop. Um, online, when you go online and sell, like let's say eBay, right? You're not just selling bullion when you sell these junk silver. You're selling to coin collectors and you're selling to the, uh, the silver collectors. You're selling to more different people who just want to collect history. People who just want to collect history now, you have a, you know, that kind of buyer at your door. Well, not at your door if you're on eBay, but you get it. You know what I'm talking about. So, I'm not trying to tell you one way or another what you should be doing in this video. That's not... I'll tell you that I love this stuff. I buy it because it has two more outs to me. But I still buy bullion, too. This goes back to, you know, diversifying. And if you diversify, you're going to find out that that's just... It makes your stack stronger and better. And you have more ways to get rid of this stuff if you do want to sell it if, and get rid of it, you know. So that's pretty much all I can really do. To me, the fascinating part was the amount of weight loss that you see in some of these, some of these old coins, you know. It's it got pretty significant there, didn't it? Whew, this would ruin the whole video if I ended up popping these these over right here, and one was not what it was supposed to be. Ooh. You'd be like, whoa, here goes the whole video. But I do want to show that I didn't just like, you know, play around and put whatever coins I wanted to in here. It was all the barbers. You know, it's the right coins. So anyways, uh, hopefully this helped. Hopefully this gave you some ideas of, you know, what the right thing to do in your own stack would be. And uh, showed you a little bit of that, that, that uh, wear. It's called a wear loss that happens when when the uh, silver gets, you know, is, is older and in somebody's pocket for a longer, longer time. It's the way it works. That's life, you know what I mean? We get older and we get worn down. Sad but true. Metallica said it best, I think. I think that was their song, Sad But True. Anyways, uh, you know, spectacular out. I gotta go eat this burrito. I'm starving to death. I'm starving like a Marvin. I uh, hope you all enjoy this. Hopefully I didn't ramble too much and confuse everybody. Um, you know, 
let me know if I did. Just go ahead and uh, thumbs down it. Thumbs down the video and tell me this was all for nothing, this 30 minute video. Uh, if you liked it though, thumbs up it please. And if you want to comment and maybe I made a mistake, you know, sometimes in my videos I make little, little mistakes. I call a coin the wrong thing and man, you all hammer me on it, man. You love when you guys are right and I'm wrong. So if that makes you feel good, go ahead and comment on it. I don't mind it. It doesn't really bother me too much, but I'll definitely uh, comment back if it's something that I feel like I can comment back on. And uh, make sure you subscribe. If you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and do that. And I always appreciate it when you do. Have a uh, great day. I'm going to eat this burrito. I'm going to think about you all while I do.